Okay, so the first video I'm joined by my husband, Steve. He can see his feet in the camera. I will be performing a demonstration to treat plantar fasciopathy. Now, many people utilize the term plantar fasciitis or plantar fasciosis. The difference between the two is plantar fasciitis is really specific to the inflammatory process where plantar fasciosis is more specific to the pain. For those who are not familiar, plantar fasciopathy uh, really involves pain and inflammation to the plantar fascia, which kind of runs from the heel all the way to the toes. The biggest complaints are you know, excruciating pain in the morning, tightness, um, pain with walking. It can really be debilitating. Now, the most common treatment is a form of manual therapy. Uh, it could be iontophoresis, ultrasound. Uh, if it's plantar fasciitis specifically, the, the target is the inflammation that is causing the soft tissue dysfunction in the first place. With um, plantar fasciosis, the target would be more of the heel and the analgesic effect or pain reduction effect of um, instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. Now, the process usually involves the warming up of the affected area or the area to be treated. So that can be a heating pad, exercise, sauna, uh, but the process would be to warm up the tissue before you perform the eye stim. So I'm going to use some emollient. Now, normally you wouldn't want to double dip, but it's my husband and I, so I'm not too worried. There are a couple different tools that I'm going to use for this demonstration in particular. If you are a patient trying to gather more information, uh, this tool is going to be used to kind of scan. It's going to be to kind of see where maybe there's some scar tissue buildup, uh, nodules, trigger points, etc. This tool, the tongue depressor, it's going to be used for more localized treatment, uh, deeper treatment, of course, depending on the angle, which you'll learn about if you take a course. If you're a clinician, you really want to make sure that you're utilizing gloves just to keep you and the patient safe. But again, for these purposes, I will not be using them. What I like about this emollient, its base is uh, made of shea butter, and a little bit goes a long way. You truly don't need to put a ton on there. I'm going to basically spread it on the area to be treated first. And as I briefly mentioned in one of the past videos, you don't want to just treat the site of pain. However, you also don't want to leave it alone. So the areas that I'm going to address are going to be up the kinetic chain from the foot. So if you're a patient, that means I'm gonna kind of work up the back even some of the front. And if you are a clinician, you have to think about it. Well, what attaches here at the heel, the Achilles tendon? Well, where does the Achilles tendon go? It goes to the gastrocnosoleus and it affects the calf, which also affects the knee, which also affects the hip, etc. So start thinking of things on a more global scale. So to begin, you'll see that this has a bevel side. You don't want to go up with the bevel facing the opposite way. Think of it as shoveling snow. You wouldn't shovel snow with the shovel side down. First, I'm just going to scan. I might put a little bit of a stretch. See what I feel? My arm might be in the way for you. But notice there is hardly any wear and tear on me. Now what I can feel, and I'll go a little bit slower so you can see the method, I can feel little reverberations in the steel itself. As a patient, Steve, what do you feel? Um, it just feels like it's hitting against the bottom of my foot and kind of making uh, a little uh, shaking feeling. So he can kind of feel the reverberations too. Now, when we talk about scar tissue, it can be in relation to fascia. Um, think of if you have hair, if you don't comb your hair, if you don't take care of it, it gets snarly. Well, imagine part of the reason I'm doing this is to comb out those snarls so that the fibers and everything run real smooth, causing optimal function of the kinetic chain starting all the way down at the bottom of the foot. Now, this can be a very aggressive treatment, or for him, this is a passive recipient treatment. I can go up, I can stretch, let me get out of the way, and I can go down, and I can see... <laughs> 
his face immediately uh, got a little red. So patients, you really need to be verbal about what you're feeling. The clinician may warn you how it could be uncomfortable, but it's, it's extremely important for you to verbalize what you're feeling with them because we're not receiving the treatment, we're giving it. Your pain level might be different than ours. Now, I scanned and I felt, which is very common, some dysfunction here in the medial or inside area of the foot. So when I treat plantar fasciitis, if I'm, if I'm first looking at the foot itself on the bottom, I tend to go in between the rays here. So I found a trigger point right here. I won't put him on stretch because he was a little bit um, sensitive, but he's snarling at me right now. I'm just digging. Now, there are several different ways that you can do this. I can go slow. If I'm kind of near a tendon, I can do a different stroke. But regardless, many people don't like their feet touched. So this tool may not be the uh, most optimal for addressing plantar fasciitis right off the bat. You might have to use something a little bit less aggressive, such as this one. Now, I won't finish that because this is just a brief demonstration. What I am going to do is ask Steve to move this up. And yet yeah, we can still see. As I mentioned before, you don't want to just treat the area of pain. So what's commonly missed by clinicians in a rush is treating the different compartments of the calf, which directly affect and are directly affected by the plantar fasciopathy, whether it's plantar fasciitis or plantar fasciosis. Now, you just use a scanner, of course you can use your hands if you like, to put the emollient on the areas to be treated. And then for me, you can hold it this way or this way, and I can comb up the muscle. You can do short strokes, you can do long strokes. Again, just to comb the tissue, and I'm feeling kind of like if I put my hand on stucco. Now, you'll notice he has a little bit of redness forming. As a patient, please, it is, it is important to remember this is normal to get a little bit of redness. That means that there is a response from the treatment. Now, you don't want to get to the point where you have bruising, okay? Back in uh, ancient Chinese culture, they wanted to bruise. Gua sha means to scrape blood because they thought it was releasing all the bad from the body. The redness from this is part of that controlled inflammatory response that I was talking about earlier. Areas that are commonly addressed and that I'll address briefly, the inside, you have post tib that directly affects function of the ankle. You have, of course, like I said, gastroc and soleus, which are for plantar flexion, so directly affecting the bottom of the foot. I might also take something a little bit more specific, such as this little guy, the multi, to get right alongside Achilles. If your Achilles is tight, it is certainly going to affect heel and ankle dysfunction, which chicken or the egg could lead to plantar fasciitis or plantar fasciitis could lead to Achilles dysfunction. How are you feeling? Good. You good? So after the treatment is done, there are a couple different methods of maintaining um, or helping that inflammatory process along its way. As I mentioned before, you wanna heat the area then treat the area but you also want to stretch, so cause a kind of reset in muscle fiber alignment or, or fascial tissue uh, alignment, but also just strengthen. So help the body keep its new found uh, optimal function or area of function. So what I would do is probably give him some stretches for the bottom of his foot, for his calf, and then progress exercise and strengthening uh, as he gets better. Some people will also use kinesio tape, uh, orthotics, or uh, splinting bracing in combination with iStim to help the body along the way as well.